What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. Since I'm about Scream 6 in this video here again today, I was going to say Halloween ends. So just to kick it off and talk about this stuff regarding Scream 6, we have some more potential new big uh, plot details to discuss from Clips Comprehend over on Twitter. And these tidbits are related to a new character. Uh, looks like this is Tony Reverend Lori's character. Stuff related to Stab. Stuff related to a teaser that should be coming this month. And stuff that's further uh, establishing rumors of a screening happening in november um and also stuff about sydney prescott just to kick it off with tony revelori who apparently is playing a character named gabriel t he is a ra a resident assistant at blackmore this is where he meets chad early on he's a nice welcoming helpful person doesn't give creep vibes and comes off very woke he wants to be a writer now a lot of people hey i said that word woke if that's in the character description if this is indeed legit you know some people be like oh this movie is going to be woke a character being woke doesn't mean the overall movie is being woke. Honestly, I would even use this as an argument. That that term woke, you could have applied that to Scream all the way back in times of Scream 3. Even the sequel, even the original Scream. It's just that what people do now is they take that word and they apply it to everything and don't recognize that though this wokeness has kind of been embedded in some of your favorite franchises already from the start. It's just that today, things are a little bit more heavy handed and a little bit more forceful with their messaging. So Tony seems like he'll be, or Gabriel, that being Tony's character. Gab Gabriel sounds like he'll be a decent character, probably something very minor, probably have, I would say maybe let's say he has a connection to Gail Weathers. I'm speculating here at this point, if he has a connection to Gail Weathers or not. Obviously it, se it seems he'll have a connection to Chad and maybe he'll have a crush on one of Chad's friends. So we'll see what happens with him. And Clip shared some interesting tidbits about the Stab franchise. I know several people are tired of the Stab franchise. I think it's played out. Some people were turned off by the fact that the motive in Scream 5 was actually related to Stab. Some people even think that Scream 5 is just a remake of Scream 4. I wouldn't say Scream 5 is a remake of Scream 4 as much as it is an attempt to do what Scream 4 tried to do. Nothing about, I won't say completely nothing. There's so much different about 5 and 4 that I can't say that it's just a Scream 4 remake as much as it is a, a, a re-attempt at doing what Scream 4 was intended to do which is reviving the franchise but a lot of people again were tired of the mention of the franchise that is stabbed in the in the universe of Scream that we know is based off of the events that we're watching on screen in the actual film franchise for us so with stab he says if those those wondering if stab plays a big part in this that's a no there's a nod to it that mimics the real-life reissue of Scream and the small theatrical run that we got during the lead-up to Scream 2022, but Stab doesn't drive this whatsoever, so that will be a breath of fresh air to a lot of people to learn that. I'm also now curious if this means that Josh Segarra's character and Samara Weaving's character have nothing to do with being struggling actresses working on an upcoming Stab project or TV series, or if that is the slight nod to it that he's mentioning. Because the nod that he actually mentions in the response or in this tweet is that it nods to it that mimics the real life reissue of the first screen movie that we got. So in this universe, I guess what they're going to be doing is re-releasing Stab for its 25th anniversary or something similar to that, which is nice. That's a nice little reference to, of course, the actual marketing campaign behind what we just did for Screen 5. But in this universe, are they actually doing that because there's a legit Stab requel that's coming? Maybe that's something that's actually a, a thing or that's not something that's happening and they just do a re-release of the movie. Um, referencing the movie and the fact that they have a requel coming, I think is, is fine, but it doesn't seem like this will have very much to do with the overall narrative of the movie. No motive thing or anything like that related to Stab, so that's a positive for most people hearing that. Then he went on to talk about this teaser. He said, when asked about a teaser coming this month, he said, yes, a teaser is coming this month. The rumors about screenings are true. There's a very, very rough cut that's missing effects, score, etc. That will be shown to an extremely select few in November. Notes will be given. Then another cut will be shown before January 1st. Now, this teaser, I'm expecting it to just feature several short clips of that rough cut that's out there and maybe have some voiceover work from Roger L. Jackson as Ghostface and just kind of get you excited for Scream 6 arriving in March next year. And then closer to G December, well, mid-December, early January, I think that's when you'll get your full-fledged trailer. Probably, yeah, I think December. I think in December we'll get our first trailer. I think you'll get your first Scream 6 trailer in, in December because what we got, we got the first Scream 5 trailer in October 
and it came out in January, so that gave them November, December. They had two months after that. So yeah, I think it would be ideal to get a Scream 6 trailer in December if we get our first small teaser this month and they can just continue to hype up the marketing and stuff throughout the year and go about it that way. Because if they put, if they put out their first trailer in December, then that leaves them January and February to go in full throttle with the marketing answer any any questions related to i guess nev if they get asked that because i i know that when marketing ramps up fully nev is going to be brought up once again there's no doubt about it and of course with these screenings i i'm really just going to say this i don't think that if nev is in the movie they will show her in in these screens i just don't think so because first of all the first screening is going to take place if anything that's probably going to be the only screening where they see her because these are people close to the production close to the the filmmaking process in the industry and probably involved with the movie that were selected to come watch this rough cut and then the test screening audience that gets to see it at a later date they're not going to see that scene that's going to be safe for march because they don't want people to go out there spoiling that similar to how halloween ends had test screenings and it was spoiled online after the test screenings and a lot of the stuff that was uh rumored for halloween ends well you'll see it if you'll see what i mean by that when you watch halloween ends later this weekend that a lot of it ended up being true if you're someone who's aware of the rumors anyway but uh just to touch on nev again really quick clip said he did see two rumors about her he doesn't want to put them out there but he's he said all he really can say about it he doesn't see her sequence in the movie running more than four or so minutes and she's not in new york like the rest of the characters he said if scream had to do with carpentry the term joiner would come come to mind when discussing nev in this one so the scene being less than four minutes honestly that's what's expected from me because she's supposed to have some cameo that's what um that's what the rumor was going around that she was supposed to have some cameo i recall also being told that she was supposed to have a cameo she wasn't going to have this larger than life role where she was going to be interacting with all the survivors like many of us think she was going to have it wasn't anything like that it sounds like it was mostly going to be a scene to set up the events of scream 7 and that's ultimately what they were able to ink a deal to do according to the new belief that she was able to ink this deal and she will appear in scream 6 now to set up the events of scream 7 also her not living in new york is not shocking i think at one point in scream Scream 5, it was going to be established that she lives in Chicago. So maybe in Scream 6, they'll actually use the term Chicago. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.